Happy weekend, everybody. Here's a short and sweet one to cap off your Sunday evening. So settle in and let's talk about peptides that have gained FDA approval. This is certainly a contentious topic given the FDA's ambiguous ban on peptide compounding this past fall, of which we've made a couple videos detailing that will be in the description below. And I think this video will even further highlight the impact financial incentive has on the guidance of research and regulation of these peptides. Quick distraction, we're at just under 1,500 subs. This time last year, I couldn't imagine hitting 100, and so I'm grateful to be part of this awesome community. If you haven't already, just super smash that subscribe button, as it's the best way to support a small peptide YouTuber like myself. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Let's move on. Whether you've heard about peptides from Joe Rogan, Andrew Huberman, More Plates, More Dates, your primary care provider, or even that absurd Ozempic jingle, most people who investigate the topic can't help but find them at the very least interesting. Not only is the rapid public acceptance of semaglutide eye-opening, but the rodent studies evaluating BPC-157 for a myriad of GI injuries have also exhibited highly unique findings, and there are a lot of cool other ones out there too. If only there was a YouTube channel that had 50 plus videos on different peptides. Hmm. But all jokes aside, let's run through which peptides have gained FDA approval and for what purpose. Since there are tons and tons of peptides, we will highlight the ones that have gained public interest. And so we won't really touch on the ones that aren't well known, because why bore you? We'll start off with the GLP-1s, Ozempic and friends. Semaglutide, the most popular of the GLP-1 agonists, is approved in multiple forms. Ozempic and Rebelsis are indicated for management of type 2 diabetes with a goal of improving glycemic control, while Wegovy is indicated for weight loss. Liraglutide in the form of Victoza is approved for regulation of blood glucose, while its sister, Saxenda, is indicated for weight management. And Terzepa which also agonizes glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide, or GIP, in addition to GLP-1, has two brands as well, Munjaro for diabetes and Zepbound for weight loss. Do you see the pattern yet? The same compound is being approved for different purposes, thereby allowing different brands to be marketed, thereby allowing an influx of pharmaceutical money that could hyperbolically span the length of the ever-expanding universe. That's why the less popular peptides have very specific specific indications, and even then, not many people hear about them. Tessamorelin, a growth hormone releasing hormone analog in the form of egrifta, interestingly gained FDA approval for HIV-associated lipodystrophy. Sermorelin used to have FDA approval, but due to unknown reasons, likely money, it had fallen out of clinical practice. For management of growth hormone deficiency, physicians turn to pharmaceuticals in the form of growth hormone itself that have, under big famous companies, gained their own approval. They've tried in the past with ipamorelin for post-operative alias, but it didn't work out. One that came out of left field is that bremelanotide, i.e. PT-141, which is essentially a metabolite of melanotan-2, is approved for indicated use of hypoactive sexual desire disorder in postmenopausal women. We did a video on this as well, in addition to multiple on Samorolin, all of which will be in the description below. Now, as far as all of the peptides go within the performance-enhancing slash human optimization space, these are the only ones that have gained FDA approval, and I hope you found this video helpful. Like, like I said, short and sweet. That is all, my friends. Give us a like and subscribe if you did enjoy it, and I hope you have a great day.